so do you, when you say the universe is conscious, mm. I mean, I just want to be, what do you mean by the word conscious there? Well, having a mind with subjective experience. So actual experience? Yes. Because I, 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 I guess my interest is to take those two worldviews, which you put so beautifully, and it feels like, look, there's, there's this, this, this ancient worldview of spirituality mm. and this new worldview of science. And somehow they need to create a third worldview, a new synthesis, which can see the, see the value of both, but both requires both to change. And one of the problems I have with the idea of the universe being totally conscious is it feels like, well, I'm conscious or unconscious. And there's things which are happening in my life right now, which are happening unconsciously. And then when I look at the evolutionary picture, it feels like, well, consciousness, isn't consciousness an emergent property of the universe? Isn't, isn't it something else which is the, the ground? What, why is it consciousness that's the ground? Or is in everything? How is a plant conscious? To, is not like us. Well, it? well, the point is that if we take our own, we know more about ourselves than anything else in sure. terms of consciousness. Yeah. And clearly our own consciousness is only part of our mental life. A yes. vast amount of it's unconscious. Yes. Um, and what's unconscious basically are habits. Yes. Now, my own view of how nature works, I mean, it's not shared by most scientists, but my own view is that the so-called laws of nature are more like habits that depend on a kind of memory within nature. Um, when things become habitual, typically they become unconscious. Yeah. When you start learning to ride a bicycle, you have to think, you learn, you put your foot on a pedal, you push down, you hold the handlebars. Once you've learned it, you don't think it about it at all. It's an automatic habit. When you're learning a new language, it's you search for each word and you have to think out the grammar. And so, but so when you speak a language fluently, it comes just flows. So that, but isn't that? Wouldn't that mean then that? I mean, I love that by the way, and I want to talk a mm. little bit more about that. I think that's a, a, an astonishing insight that you've just shared there. Mm. But just to finish that previous bit of that, the, the, whether everything is conscious, wouldn't that mean that things which are not learning like we learn, like plants, like chemicals, like they're not conscious because they're doing it through the habits of nature. They're not conscious like we are in that reflective way. That's something which has emerged with us or with oh, other forms well, I don't of life. think it's emerged with us. Okay. I mean, I think, you see, I think what consciousness is to do with is the realm of possibility. Yeah. I think consciousness is about possibilities. Possibilities are not the same as actualities. Yep. Um, and I think one of the great insights of the philosopher Alfred North Whitehead was yep. that this aspect of possibility is something that happens all through nature. I mean, in quantum theory, um, the Schrodinger wave equation for an electron, which tells you what an electron's going to do, doesn't tell you what it's exactly going to do. It tells you all the possible things it could do. So there's a whole realm of possibility, even for an electron, which doesn't exist as a physical fact. Possibility is not a physical fact. As soon as the electron chooses, or an, as soon as a choice is made for it, or maybe at random, of all those possibilities collapse down to one actual thing it does, it's called the collapse of the wave function, then uh, it becomes a physical measurable fact, but it's in the past. But is that the same thing as, isn't, isn't the, what, what defines it, what consciousness is that we know we're doing that. Like, I know that I'm choosing a possibility to say this sentence, whereas in a plant, say, that it doesn't know that it's doing that. Isn't that the defining thing about well, consciousness? Well, no, I think consciousness would come in whenever there's an uncertainty and a decision needs to be made. I think it's the ability to hold together possibilities and to choose among them. I think that's the but function. Isn't, isn't the choosing the key? You, do you yes, think, do you but think I think are choosing? Well, I think they might be. Okay. You know, when, when you have a tendril of a climbing plant sort yeah. of searching around for something to grip onto, yeah. um, you know, when it finds uh, a, an object and wraps around it, it may, it, it's searching, it's searching a space of possibilities. It finds something, it acts. I think that there may be, in situations like that, an element of choice. I think a lot of its actions are to do with habit, yeah. um, just as most of ours are to do with habit. Yeah. So whenever there's a choice, whenever there's a possibility of doing it one way or another way, um, then I think consciousness may come into play.